Hello and welcome to another Travel Risk Management Health Safety and Security Advice. Advisory tip, my name is Tony Ridley, Editor-in-Chief at TravelRiskManagementSolutions.com. Safety and hazard identification. Firstly, when we talk about the risks associated to travel, it's not just from an efficiency and productivity perspective, but also as it pertains to the individual. For safety and hazard identification, too few organisations and travellers themselves adequately identify the associated threats and hazards and then plan appropriately. What they simply do is they jump to solutions. They jump to uh, the result, the placebos, the insurance, the assistance, the management um, or, or the information report. What needs to be done from the organisation and the individual's perspective is to identify the safety and hazards first because it's from these threats and hazards that then determines your exposure which you then encompass and consider your management mitigation treatment solutions and from there that is what governs your overall risk exposure so when we talk about risk appetite and tolerances for risks and so on that is the final downstream problem however the upstream problem when we look at safety and hazard could be things such as gender specifics it could be the individual has a particular uh, religious dom- denomination they're going to an area where that could cause agitation or targeting um, safety could be um, they simply drive on the opposite side of the road and therefore instinctively when the individual crosses the road they are going to look in the wrong direction and potentially get run over um, they don't speak the language so if they do have a prevailing um, uh, health condition um, and they're unable to communicate that information then they're unlikely to be able to communicate it during a time of duress or even you know if they're um, struck down by a particular illness or injury um, again all of these processes uh, or this system and process is not unique it's not different to any other risk register or, or hazard identification system um, it simply becomes more complex and laborious for organizations when they realize that well I actually need to do this for um, either individual itineraries or each of the destinations that we travel to um, or each travel sort of uh, channel that we're using and that's where most people just simply give up in organisations and it's just an excuse to delay for another day um, or it's or it's a process of, well, it can't be done. Well, the reality is it can be done, it is being done and it certainly should be done. So it's not simply not permissible or if you believe it's permissible to say in your own defence, whether it be in a court of law or the public opinion, to say, well, you know what, it was a big job, it was a big task um, and you know, we're really busy, we just didn't bother and that's why that individual faced a preventable, avoidable, unnecessary safety concern that left them incapacitated or dead. Um, it's, that's the reality. That's what it often comes down to, is that the vast majority of incidents that have led to a critical event were either foreseeable, they were either identifiable, or they were known threats and hazards if they had have been looked at in a more broad spectrum, all-encompassing manner, rather than simply the silos that uh, many organisations, services and governments tend to uh, focus on. So the start point for organisations is pretty simple. Look at the basics of the start of the journey. So is the individual travelling, and it should be door to door. So is the individual driving four hours to get to the airport? Where you work may not be next to an airport. So where and how is that individual commuting? The time of the day, the weather, all those sorts of things... Are there systems and and mechanisms that you can put in place to manage the safety or identify the the hazards associated with the very moment that individual has left home? Then, you know, airports, then we're looking at airlines and then we're looking at uh, commutes to and from travel nodes. We're looking at accommodation, the, uh, the, the safety standards in that particular country what they're exposed to with the particular journey, the activities that they're taking place with at the time, all these sorts of things, again, need to be considered as part of the overall safety and hazard identification. Does this need to be done, you know, a thousand times a day or does it need to have a thousand points for each itinerary? I don't know. It depends on the organisation. It depends on the individual and the itinerary. But certainly, if organisations are familiar with their own workplace and office health and safety systems, then this is also the extended version that encompasses travel as well. So the identification and documentation, equally just as important, of safety and hazards, 
um, which then helps you um, correlate or determine and apportion resources is then what determines the overall risk rating. So once again, if you've simply jumped to the end state and oh, our risk rating is X, Y, and Z, then it's not defensible. It's not a system. It's not a process. It's certainly not repeatable. It's simply a, a shortcut placebo or a something nice to have to say, well, yes, we've done it, when actually all it takes is a few simple steps to identify. And one of the first questions and the easiest way to prove to pretty much any organization if they do or don't have a system in place is ask them to show you the form that you fill in when there's been an incident. If they don't have one, then they don't have a system. It's that simple. Yes, yes, we have something in place and yes, we do this and you go, great. So if a traveler experiences a near miss or a safety consideration when traveling, show me the form that they fill in can often be met with silence or embarrassment when the reality is it doesn't exist it's never been there so therefore they're not capturing all of the information and they've not actually considered the safety and hazards they've simply jumped to the risk mitigation solutions so once again thanks very much for joining us on another travel risk management health safety and security advisory tip for more information and videos on this subject please visit the website at www.travelriskmanagementsolutions.com thanks and that's all for now goodbye